Well, our security and defence analyst, Professor Michael Clark, is in the studio with me now to talk about this a bit more. And, um, uh, Michael, the United States shared information with <clears throat> the Kremlin, didn't it, about a potential attack um, in Moscow. Um, why wasn't more security then positioned or ready and waiting, do you think? It's hard to say, Simon. I mean, they, they were told in pretty specific terms that an Islamic State or jihadist attack of some sort on a venue, probably a, conf a conference or a concert venue, big venue. And the Americans certainly believed it, the Russians didn't. But even so, they didn't even take precautionary measures. So this uh, conference centre was not well prepared for an attack. The exits were locked. They should have been open in any case, in the case of danger of fire. The people who dealt with it was the Rosgvardia, who were the National Guard. And we checked it out. This is Highway 105, E105. The National Guard base, the local base, was only two miles away. So they could have been up there, up the main road, within two or three minutes. And they were at least half an hour, some say an hour, before they arrived. So there seems to be in chaos. And at a, at a bigger level, there was a clear breakdown in intelligence. Um, you know, if they didn't believe the American intelligence, they should have had their own intelligence. If it was clear to the Americans, it should have been clear to them. And these, the, the Russians, the two big intelligence agencies, is the FSB, which is the, uh, the old KGB, the internal uh, uh, intelligence agency. So that's equivalent to our MI5, which is run by Alexander Bortnikov. And he's very close to Putin. He's been in his job since 2008. And he's one of Putin's very inner circle. So, you know, he can get by regardless of the failings of the FSB, which are considerable. The other one is um, Sergei Narishkin there, the man on the right, and he's the director of the SVR, which is the Foreign Intelligence Service. That's equivalent to MI6. So Narishkin is equivalent to M, you know, in the James Bond MI6 idea. The, the real one is called C in reality, the letter C, but in James Bond films it's M. Well, that's him in right. the Russian case. And he, uh, the FSB, is, uh, the SVR, has presided over more and more... Um, uh, messes, mess ups and uh, sins of omission than you might imagine. And, and I don't know why he stays in his job because Putin regularly humiliates him. Right. And, and speaking of President Putin, he has claimed that all the attackers have now been detained. Interestingly, with at least four of them uh, being found near the border with Ukraine. Now, what should we make of that or how much of that should Bryansk, we yeah. believe? Well, I mean, where they, they say that they've picked these people up is uh, 400 kilometres from Moscow. So, in theory, these people escaped. They got through a cordon around the city in their vehicle. They drove 400 kilometres, five hours or so, to Bryansk, and then they were picked up. And there's some pretty nasty videos going around, which may or may not be true, of the arrests and, and these people being mistreated. Um, we'll see. But the, the, the outside world, the Russians are all saying this is connected to Ukraine. The outside world is pretty clear. These are uh, ISIS uh, Karamsar, uh, 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 ISIS um, Khorasan, um, who's ISIS K, mm. who are a, 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 a new group of ISIS who establish themselves in the border areas between Pakistan and um, uh, uh, Afghanistan and are attacking Russia in the way they attack Western countries. Professor Michael Clark. Thank you.